over here. Um, if you have not already signed up for a developer license uh, with Kintone, please do. It's free. And it's uh, and it's for you to to use um, not just over here at our session today, but you know for the rest of for the for the next twelve months um, as needed. And then of course, if you have any questions, please uh, post them in the Zoom chat. Um, this will likely become important later when we give you some work to do. Uh, you'll if you run into any issues, you'll post your code and your error messages in the chat. Uh, and this will all be recorded, so uh, that recording will be shared uh, later. Okay, housekeeping items almost all out of the way. Before we begin, um, please post in the chat, you know, who are you, where are you from, and uh, how comfortable are you with APIs? I see uh, some of you have already, uh, already done that, so I just want to thank uh, uh, Lola from uh, Seattle, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Irina from north of San Francisco, thank you. Elizabeth from LA, thank you. Uh, anybody else uh, who I've missed? All right, great. Hey, Patricia from San Francisco, thank you. Yvette, hey there. Hey, Alexandra, Bay Area, thanks for joining us. Uh, Melissa from the Bay Area, thank you. Guys, great, great. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Kimberly from Huntsville, Alabama, oh, terrific. Um, love to love that we've got a, a crowd from all over uh, the world over here from uh, uh, Sharon from Southern California, uh, Sharon from Southern California, uh, Sumati from San Francisco, Johanna from Argentina. Great. And APIs and I aren't best friends yet. If you are not yet best friends with APIs, this is going to be like your first cup of coffee with a buddy. Okay, that's, that's the, uh, the feeling you're going to want to walk out of here today with. Bonding time, you betcha. Okay. Um, typically, uh, Will, Genji, and or Kelly will uh, be answering any questions. Uh, I'm, I may uh, pick up a question or so as, uh, as I'm going through the, uh, the, the content today. Um, but if I don't manage to get to it, uh, one of my colleagues will. And uh, if you were asking about what license, again, that's a developer license. Uh, the Kintone developer license is needed for you to access the platform uh, so we can, uh, we can make API calls to it. Okay, let's talk about REST APIs. And, uh, oh, no, just kidding, let's talk about me. Um, real quick, I uh, went to, so my name is Nim. Uh, I'll be your uh, presenter for tonight. My job is to make sure that you get uh, everything you came here for when it comes to, um, oh, Hold on one second. I'm being told that my screen my screen is locked. Let's let's roll this back. Hey, okay. Uh, here we are. Perfect. A little bit about me. Uh, I uh, my background is in sales and marketing, and then uh, I was I was living on the east coast of the, of the U.S. I had a heart to heart with my dad, who told me uh, I think you'd be great as a software engineer. Go fourth young man to the West Coast and learn computers. So I did. I did very well. Um, I went through a coding boot camp uh, called Hack Reactor, and then I was hired. Uh, I, I did some projects, and then I was hired uh, by Kintone as a sales engineer. When I say sales engineer, many people don't know what that means. Basically, if you look to buy software and you get on the phone with a salesperson and they say, oh, you've got some very interesting requirements. I'm gonna get my technical advisor on the line and they'll help, help us see whether or not we will be a great fit for you. I was that guy that they brought on the line. Uh, I then became the lead sales engineer, managed the sales engineering team and am now our uh, technology slash technical evangelist here. Uh, at Kintone where you know, I'm, I talk about what's great about our platform and I also help to uh, educate the next generation of coders. That's enough about me. This is what we want you to take away from tonight. So first and foremost, to understand what a REST API is and uh, what data is needed to call it. And then for you to successfully make a REST API call. So if you don't get along with APIs just yet, um, we'll, we will seek to change that within two hours time. The first thing we should talk about is what is a REST API? And so uh, typically a really, a really useful metaphor that we'll get a lot of mileage out of 
is the uh, is the restaurant metaphor. So imagine uh, imagine the days where you used to sit down at a restaurant and order food many moons ago. Um, you would have somebody come up to you. You'd have a you'd have a menu actually. You'd order from the menu. Someone would come up to you, take the order, and then uh, deliver your order somewhere. You don't quite know where it went, just the back somewhere. And uh, things would happen beyond your awareness. And then uh, you'd come back and you would have uh, what you asked for or some additional communication. So you'd ask for a cheesecake and uh, the waiter would go and make the communication and then deliver you a cheesecake if uh, there was one available. So that's the, uh, that's the metaphor. What does that actually look like on the internet? Well, take Instagram, for example. We'll, let's say we, we navigate over to uh, you know, www.instagram.com and uh, we are basically communicating to the computer that's showing us that website. Hey, show me this website. Show me this user's Instagram posts. Uh, at which point in time, that, uh, that communication goes on to the Instagram computers and then they give us back, you know, ideally here are the, this user's Instagram posts. That's a REST API. That's the high, like that's what it looks like out in the wild. What does it stand for? Well, REST stands for representational state transfer and uh, state transfer and uh, an API stands for application programming interface. Uh, this is just like really cocktail party stuff. You can keep this in your back pocket if you want to impress someone. This isn't uh, something that you really need to remember uh, out in the real world when you're, when you're coding or doing your job. Um, but it's helpful to know because it gives you some, it gives you like a, like a compass for understanding what this is and, and how it works. So given that, uh, uh, Everyone's got a very different ideas of what an API is. Let's see uh, what we're coming to the table with. So please, in the chat at this time, type out, like, how would you explain an API to a five-year-old? Yeah, I know it's it, it might it's not a trick question. Um, what? How would you explain an API to a five-year-old? Go ahead, give it your best shot. And if you don't know or don't have any inkling of an idea, go ahead and type that into. Hey, I'm racking my brain, can't think of anything. And that'll help me because I will know uh, how to pace this uh, this lesson. So I'm not waiting for you to type. Yeah, shoot, no idea because I need an explanation for like if I'm perfect. All right, yeah, Elizabeth, Yvette, you're in the perfect place. Anyone else want to give it a shot? Yeah, a customer making requests to a waiter and getting some response. <laughs> you're on the right track. A set of rules you need to follow to talk to so to talk to X. Great. Great. API can check information on a server. Great. Here, bring me some milk from the fridge and we'll make pancakes. You want a cookie and mom gave you one. Request and response. The only word that comes to mind is interface. An integration that often breaks and needs good docs to fix. Oh man, someone's, someone's been out there in the cold before. Um, yeah, so remember API stands for application programming interface. Request processing response. Very good, you are, is, API is like your mom and dad. Will, I can tell that you are from the UK because you spell mom with a U and not an O. Um, so you guys are all describing um, a RESTful API. Let's look at what an API is, just the API part, okay? And a great metaphor for an API is the toaster, okay? Why is that? Well, so think about a toaster, right? If you wanted to heat up your bread and make toast, you do not need to take a hammer to the plastic, break it open, hot wire the insides and make sure, and then like put, um, 
put bread on exposed, you know, on hot exposed metal for a minute until it turns black where you, you know, carefully or not so carefully turn it off or uh, pull it off rather. Um, no, actually the toaster has its own way of interacting with you. The designers of the toaster have hid the insides away from you so that you don't electrocute yourself. And they've made using the toaster uh, available through very specific control points. Those interface points are the heat control dial, the bread slots, the power outlet plug, and the bread lever. And that's pretty much it for a toaster. These are our interface points, right? So I put in a toaster in the bread slot, or actually I plug in the toaster in the power uh, in the outlet. I put the bread in the slot. I uh, dial the toaster so it's at the right amount of heat. And then I uh, push the lever down so I get my toast. After a few moments, it'll pop up, I'll get my toast. So how is this like an application programming interface? Well, surprisingly, it's very simple. Um, in an application programming interface, some engineering team has hidden away the insides of their program, and they have exposed control points for you to interact with in order to get what you want from their tool. And so when you are interacting with that application, with that with that, uh, at, with that application's programming interface, you are um, communicating with it in some way to get what you want. You're, you're essentially, to extend the toaster metaphor, you're putting the bread in or you're plugging in the outlet or you're dialing, you know, you're moving the dial. So when we talk about application programming interface, that's really what we're talking about. There is a private part of the application that you know nothing about and that you don't need to know anything about. And then there are the access points, the application's programming interface, where you, uh, by virtue of the code that you write, will uh, programmatically interact with the application at the, at the places that it has designated. And by doing it that way, um, we can, uh, we can communicate with the tool in a way that that engineering team expects and can uh, design for and control for and, uh, and fix problems for. So that's what an API is. So if you want to, if you want to introduce APIs to, five -year -old, to a five-year-old, now you're clear, you can talk about toasters. How about representational state transfer? Well, representational state transfer is a way of um, designing an API on the internet um, so that it works in a particular way. Um, a uniform interface, uh, which I'm actually going to skip over. It's a little, bit, a little bit going into the weeds on what a uniform interface is, but the client server are independent. What does that mean? It means that you've been able to uh, separate out um, like a, like a, like a, like designate specific scopes of, of what is needed so that uh, it's easier to manage. So for example, you've got one or more uh, computers that are acting in a particular way as clients. You've got one or more computers that are acting in a particular way as servers. Um, and they, uh, and that separation of concerns makes it easier to manage. It's stateless. Stateless in this case, meaning that the request contains, the, the communication between computers contains uh, everything that the other computer needs, and it doesn't need to refer to previous uh, requests or responses. It's each, each uh, communication is self-contained. Um, cacheable. That means that uh, depending on the communication, you could have a client, for example, save a server's response and use it over and over again if they're expecting that response to be the same. Layered system. A layered system is a way of designing um, systems so that you are, uh, you are only talking to the part that you need to talk to and then the other parts are hidden away from you. Uh, that each layer is hidden away from another layer that might be hidden away from another layer. The toaster example, you've got two layers, right? You've got the layer that people are touching 
and then the layer that's underneath the plastic or the metal. Uh, but in a, uh, in a more sophisticated example on like Instagram, for instance, you might have a particular server endpoint that you're talking to, um, and that might actually be an abstraction for uh, layers of like load balancers or different uh, web workers or various different kinds of uh, uh, different like servers jobs that you don't see and that don't matter to you. And that might even on the server side not matter um, from one layer to another. And then code on demand, uh, that's also, uh, let, let's, let's just say that this is an optional piece of this architectural style as well. Um, what you should be hearing in all of this is like, we're designing in a certain way for, uh, to make it easy and robust to communicate. So oh, let's sum this up. An API, an application programming interface, provides access points to a program or a system uh, so that others can interact with it where they are, where they have been designed to do so. And uh, REST is, the, is a particular style of, uh, of building out uh, web-based APIs that allows that communication to be uh, easy and robust. Together, we've got the REST API, which is a particular kind of application programming interface that adheres to the RESTful style. You may also hear me call this a RESTful API. The two, the two terms are interchangeable. Okay, so that's the high level of what exactly it is a REST API uh, is. What does that mean to you when you are building or coding? Well, let's think about it, right? If we are sending messages from one computer to another, what might we need in order for that communication to be a successful one? So please guys, anytime you see a, a slide like this, it's an invitation for you to preempt the question and just start typing in the chat. So what is needed to send a message? Not a trick question. You can even think about it from a postal, post office uh, uh, metaphor. What do you need in order to set, to, uh, like successfully send a message from one person to another? Address, very good. Connection, yeah, that's right. You do need some, uh, some substrate, some kind of platform on which you can deliver the communication uh, and have it be effective or ineffective. That's right. Information. Okay, great. You need a success message. Great. Uh, so when I, Alexandra, when you say information, I hear uh, data. Like you have got some contents of the message. Great. Anything else? Great. Needs to be secured. So you need to have some thought put into like, you know, how can I make sure that the right people are seeing uh, this message or the contents of this message. Origin and destination address, yeah, that's right. But name, very good everyone. So what we're gonna talk about are the four parts of the REST API call and they are the destination, the type of message, uh, permissions and other metadata and the actual message. And I want you guys to really think about this like, this is mostly stuff you already know, only we're talking about how to implement it from a, a programming and, and uh, engineering perspective, that's all. Okay, so in English, what we call the destination in coding language, in, well, let me rephrase that, in, in, uh, in text speak, we'll call the endpoint. The type of message in text speak, we'll call the method. Permissions and other metadata, we'll call those headers. And then the actual message, the data, in other words, the content that you're carrying, that's the body. And that's our vocabulary, okay? So an endpoint is going to be a URL. And typically, the, uh, the, the API that you're connecting to will share with you what endpoint you want to visit uh, that, so that you can uh, communicate there at the place where the tool expects you to communicate. For the method, um, you are, you're communicating what it is that you're doing or requesting to do 
uh, are you get are you like fetching information to display on your computer? Are you um, sharing information with the computer uh, with the expectation that computer will will hold on to it? Are you updating information that's already existing on that other computer? Are you deleting information that that other computer already has? Those four what we call HTTP methods are the most common. There are more, um, but these are the four that you want to get intimately familiar with, and they are uh, really down the line, like I said, get, post, put, and delete. Uh, and then uh, headers. Headers is like additional information you're passing along with your request to make sure that it's contextualized appropriately. So that might, an example of that might be like uh, that you've got the appropriate permissions to be communicating with this server at the desk, at the endpoint that you were visiting. You visit an endpoint, anybody can visit an endpoint, even people who are not authorized. You know, that, that endpoint might be made available publicly through uh, expected or nefarious means. And uh, the servers at that endpoint want to know, okay, if you, or do you have the authority to communicate with us here? So that's one example of a header. Another example of a header might be you're sharing with the server, hey, I am giving you some information and it has the following uh, format. Please expect to receive the, the communication in the following format. Those are two uh, very typical examples of what you might expect to see in a header. And then a body, which is the actual message. Now, uh, a typical example of, uh, of the format of a body is uh, JSON, which we'll talk about later. All right. So this is the high level of, you know, so far we talked about what is a REST API, what are the parts of a REST API. Now we're going to go ahead and call a REST API. And using the information we just discussed, should be a little clearer to you what happens when we start, you know, doing some coding wizardry. So it won't be as, uh, it, it, it ought to be clearer. Okay, well, what API are we calling? In this case, we're going to be calling Kintone's API. We're doing that because uh, it's on hand and it's easy to do, and uh, you'll receive very predictable expected results. Uh, so please, if you have not yet uh, signed up for your developer license, go ahead and do that. Now, you may be asking, what is Kintone's? Fair question. Uh, it's a cloud platform that allows teams to easily share and uh, collaborate on their data. So you see over here, we've got uh, some dashboards, some graphs, charts, and a way of, uh, of communicating with other members of our team by, uh, by tagging them, and then they get notifications. And uh, it's a way to um, connect your business data with your uh, collaboration, oh, uh, sorry, to put, to put your conversations and your business data all in one place. Now, the core building block in Kintone is called an app. You can imagine an app like a, uh, a table in a, in a database or a, a spreadsheet in a workbook uh, where data is stored in records. And uh, you can build apps by easily uh, dragging and dropping fields and you can also customize them with client-side JavaScript. This tends to make it very useful uh, if you're looking to quickly spin up a, uh, a database um, or if you want to demonstrate uh, your, your coding expertise, you can very easily uh, use our, our JavaScript API and our REST API uh, to build useful customizations and plugins. What we're gonna do with Kintone is we're gonna ask Kintone to give us an in, uh, the information contained in one record in an app, okay? So like I said, Kintone has many different apps. We're gonna uh, select a specific app and we're gonna speak to Kintone asking to pull a single records piece of information from that app. If you want to uh, consult the entirety of our SDPI documentation, you see there's a link on the bottom of this slide. You don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, you're, you should, you, if you don't already have access to this deck, you will get it uh, after we, we end today, and then you can always get, grab this information later. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get an endpoint. We're going to uh, 
clarify the method that we're using. We're going to get all of the, we're going to set up all of the, uh, the header information that we need and we will um, uh, get, uh, put in the, the body information as well. And then all together, we'll be able to call that REST API. So what you see on the right hand is uh, here we are in an app, which is, as I said, it's like a table. We're going into one record. The text of that record is, you successfully made an API call. That's helpful for us because we know that if we start typing things into our terminal and we get a message that says you successfully made an API call, folks on the line, you know the reason why we have that text is um, that's, of that, that's the, the data that's contained in the record and it's going to give us uh, the, like both, it's going to tell us that we did, our, did what we wanted to do and the actual information is going to say, oh, okay, we made the call. So, What's this going to look like? Well, in our terminal, we've got our four pieces, the four parts of the, of the REST API call. We've got um, the endpoint, the method, the headers, and the body. And so um, we'll go ahead into our Kintone app, and uh, we'll open that app. Here we are about to go into the record. And we'll want to get that particular text. So we open the record. And we're going to grab some important pieces of information over here to fill out our body. So first is we're going to copy the URL. You notice there is a subdomain over here that we're going to want. We'll pull that out. We'll also pull out that number one case slash one, we'll grab that one, and we'll grab another one, the record equals one. So we'll have that endpoint, which is what we copied, and it's the entire URL, it's, um, no, it's not the entire URL that we pasted. We're actually modifying this URL with the, uh, with the URL that we pasted. We changed the subdomain. We'll clarify that it's a get method. Uh, we'll provide this particular uh, API token, which is, uh, a way of establishing correct permissions. And then um, we'll get the, uh, we'll put the, the correct app ID and the record ID in the body that we'll then send out to the to Kintone. So we have all this information. Now we're gonna work some wizardry. If you're on Mac, you're gonna use an application called curl. And curl's got all sorts of different parameters. In this particular uh, order, we're uh, telling it what method we're using. We are uh, grabbing that endpoint. You'll notice uh, we're including straight quotes on either side of the URL. It's very important. And then we've got this backslash over here. This backslash over here tells me tells the computer that I, uh, I if I start a new line, it should continue to read the new line as if it's part of the same command. That dash h command, uh, sorry, that dash h parameter tells curl this is a header that we want and it's got this value. Here's another header that we want. In this particular case, we're going to tell uh, we're going to tell curl to pass this parameter along. That the type of content we are passing into the server is called application slash JSON. And then uh, we're going to add data. That's what the lowercase d is for. So we're telling curl, okay, pass in the data parameter. And here it is. And notice again the straight quotes on either side. So now that we've created this command, we'll execute it in the terminal. You'll see over here, the command gets pasted, and then uh, we received a response. And you'll see actually in the response, it'll say, you successfully made an API call. 
We pasted it in here separately so that it'll be easier to see. The response that we received is a JSON. Again, we'll talk about that shortly. And you can see that the value in the text field that we created was you successfully made an API call. So what we did worked. Let's break this down. If you're on Mac or Linux or Unix or some kind of other Nix system, you'll use curl. And you'll use the headers that we went over. If you're on Windows, you're going to use a tool called PowerShell. The idea is the same, but the syntax is different. Instead of using curl, you'll use a tool called invoke dash web request. Then you'll identify the headers. You'll identify the method. You'll identify the, uh, the endpoint and then the body, and you can see those back ticks on each one of these lines, are, they serve the same role as those backslashes uh, in, on a Nix system, indicating to the, uh, to the machine, uh, I've created a new line, but it's for uh, my formatting, it's still a continuation of the same command. Here we go, that's our endpoint, that's our method, here are our tokens, and this is our body. If you get a response that looks like a whole bunch of stuff pasted together with a bunch of brackets, opens and closes brackets, you, just got, you're, you may need to dig a little bit to find that value you successfully made an API call, but, uh, but this kind of response is, is typically good news. It means you made some kind of communication, you got some kind of response, uh, that part worked, okay? So with all of these four pieces, the endpoint, the method, the headers, and the body, uh, I would say, hey, jump in, but actually, hold on a second. There are a few things that I want to make you aware of. First of all, I highly encourage you uh, to, if you have not done so already, please use a code editor to, uh, to, to work these exercises. So from left to right, here are, some of, here are three that we've mentioned that are uh, free, freely available. The blue, uh, the blue little ribbon, that's uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a great tool. Next to that, the, uh, the red, uh, sorry, the orange ribbon and the black, uh, the black box, that's Sublime Text, also a great tool. And then to the right of that is a tool called uh, Atom, which the icon looks exactly the way that you would expect, okay? Doing these exercises in a code editor will help you to, it'll, it'll just save you pain and suffering, and it'll make it easy for you to debug. Um, if you're using a tool like Notepad or a tool like WordPad, um, you're inviting more pain. I highly recommend you don't do that. So definitely use a code editor. Uh, my, for my personal use, I use uh, Visual Studio Code. I love it, and it's got really great extensions that I've found helpful in my career. Uh, and then the second thing that you also take very close care of is <coughs> use, use straight quotes. Now, one of the reasons that we recommend you use a code editor and not like Microsoft Word or WordPad is that those tools might auto format or auto correct your straight quotes with some other kind of quotes, which breaks your code. So, uh, it sucks to have to go into your code banging your head against the wall trying to figure out what's going wrong when it's like an errant quotation mark. Um, that's one of the reasons why working with code editors uh, makes your coding life easier. All right. Another thing to recognize is if you're using Windows, uh, you may have a potential bug with PowerShell. Uh, the gist that we posted has some instructions for how to uh, check your, your TLS version on PowerShell to make sure um, that you avoid any uh, errors. Um, so what you need, you'll need to set a newer version of a TLS in order, to, in order to work with Kintone. And then finally, you may uh, run into some issues with you need, with PowerShell on Windows that you need something with Internet Explorer in which case, um, you know, go ahead and open up Internet Explorer and, uh, and change these settings. Okay. 
let's go. Let's get to work. Go ahead and take uh, the next few minutes to um, get started building your own API request. You're going to make a get call to Kintone, and um, Genji, I'm wondering. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, nope. Never mind. Uh, yep. Go ahead and then uh, raise your hand when you're done. So in order to raise your hand, you'll you'll need to go to the uh, participants tab, and you'll select the participants tab, and then you'll click raise hand. Okay. Um, actually, if you've already gotten started, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you. I'm gonna ask everyone at this point in time, please raise your hand right now. That way, I know that you can do it. Uh, I know who to look for. Um, and I'll be looking to you guys to make sure that you everybody got what they needed. If you don't raise your hand at this time, I will assume um, you're not you're not uh, dialed in on this exercise, and I will uh, I will not wait for you to be done. All right, great. Thank you, everybody. If you need help raising your hand, you go to the participants tab. You'll open up the participants uh, window. It's a small window that'll pop up, and then you'll hit um, raise hand. Okay, great. Folks, if you've already raised your hand, you can go ahead and uh, not raise it. You can, un you can lower your hand and uh, get, get, get started. And we'll give you, you know what, let's give you seven minutes and then we'll come back and see how we do on time. And in the meantime, if you run into any issues, please post them in the chat. Say, this is my input and this was my output. And we'll help you work through it. And then uh, go ahead and raise your hand once, you're, once you've completed the exercise. Okay, great. Lola, nice work. Can you please uh, keep your hand up? can raise your hand and keep it up. If, you, uh, if you're done. And then could you give the instructions again? You can see that in the chat. Yes, go ahead and um, create your own uh, REST API call following the format that we, uh, we shared. You can, you can grab that information from the uh, from the gist that Genji has shared uh, in the chat, which is immediately above uh, Elizabeth's comment. So you'll grab that piece of code, you'll open up a terminal, and you will post that information in. If, and if, you'll, if you're using a Mac, you'll use the Mac version. If you're using the, um, the uh, PC, ver the Windows version, you'll uh, put in the Windows version. When you're done, please raise your hand and keep it up. If you have any uh, questions. So Nim, yeah, Nim, for this particular exercise, you, you don't need your developer license yet, right? You don't need your developer license yet. Well, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, just making sure. Um, so it's, it's, it's accessing, it's hitting a domain that uh, Nim has. Um, that's right. So you don't need to develop a license yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you very much for the clarification. Uh, yeah, folks, if you don't have your developer license yet, no worries. You will need it imminently, uh, but not for this example. For this example, it's enough to um, make the call to our own uh, our own subdomain that we've created. Okay, great. Well, also, I see. It. Go ahead. I'd like to make a quick comment. Thank you for. Um, People who have pointed out uh, we can't copy and paste links on Zoom. If you could uh, select the URL area and drag it to the browser, then you're able to open it uh, pretty easily. So, um, and for future state, um, like after the meetup, if you update Zoom, then you should be able to click links. I think it was like a security patch that came in like three, four days ago. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for that.
Okay, terrific. We're going to give another uh, one to two minutes. Where shall I submit this code? Um, you'll run it in your terminal, Alexandra, and then uh, if you get the expected response, please raise your hand. If you get an error, uh, go ahead and and then in the chat, you'll say, this is what my input is, and copy your input, and then this is what my output is, and, and paste your output. All right, everybody's doing great. Seen a lot of raised hands, good pacing. Very good, everyone. For those of you who are uh, still working it out, why don't you share with us, uh, you know, where are you stuck? Or uh, if there's a specific place you, uh, you'd like some assistance. And you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you're feeling particularly courageous or social. Uh, if not, you can put it in the chat. Either one's fine. I don't know if you're familiar with Zoom webinar, but uh, it's a tool that you can get like hundreds of people on the same Zoom and it, and it prevents people from being able to unmute themselves. So we, uh, we set up this Zoom so that we can create an environment where any of you at any point can unmute and, uh, and chime in with questions. Um, it's a little bit riskier for everyone, but uh, also the environment's a little more intimate too, and we, we feel that's important to make sure everybody gets what they came here for. Okay. Um, Alexandra, the issue you might be running into is, um, could be, can you please put in your, in, can you please copy and paste your input? This is a great example, folks, of, of how to uh, debug online. You'll put the, uh, the output, you'll put the input. Uh, very good. So where it says underscore token here, you're going to uh, replace underscore token underscore here underscore with the value of the API token. Genji, could you, um, will you show us how you did it? Yep, sure. Uh, so here we are. What actually happened? So what we did is we, we got all of the pieces of this request, the endpoint, the uh, API token, and uh, Alexandra, this is, this is the token that you want. Now, Genji, please correct me if I'm wrong. That API token should be available in the gist, right? Uh, perfect. You're already beating me to it. Genji just uh, posted in the in the gist um, that link, so you'll have that that token available over there. Then we included the the content type header, which is uh, application slash JSON, and then we included the data as well. Genji. Uh, thank you for posting the command for Mac users in the group chat. Folks, if you have not yet done this, you can go ahead and grab that uh, information in the Zoom chat. Go ahead and uh, if you can copy it, uh, copy it and paste it in your terminal. And Sorry. then run it. Yeah, Note. go ahead. Um, I, uh, uh, please be careful about copy and pasting code from Zoom. Is some for some reason, the formatting doesn't work. Uh, it is a lot more reliable if you go to the uh, GitHub link and copy and pasting the commands from there. 
but I wanted to show you how it looks specifically at API token. It doesn't have the insert here. Instead, it has the um, alphanumerical uh, characters. Thank you, Genji. Once we hit enter on that command in the terminal, we've told the computer to shoot off a request to that particular endpoint at Kintone at devnet, devevents.kintone.com. And uh, Kintone is prepared to receive that request. And if it is formatted correctly, it will give us the appropriate response. Jen is asking where to get the token in general. I've got you covered, Jen, stay tuned. We'll, talk, we'll, uh, we'll cover that. Okay, great. Elizabeth, you can go ahead and raise your hand if you haven't done so already. You get that, get that dopamine hit for the victory of raising your hand. Okay, awesome. And uh, let's, so let's take a deeper look at this response. Should we get a response like this? And what this is, is it, when, when this gets made nice, it, we, can, we can read it like so. The, the type of content we've received is called a, a JSON object. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And uh, it's simply a way of formatting data so that it is, let's call it sensible to a computer and reasonably sensible to uh, a human. This is what it looks like when it's nice. And what you need to know about it is um, JSON has is, is comprised of what we call key value pairs. Some pretty intuitive ways of thinking about key value pairs is you've got a key of first name and the last name is crisp, or sorry, a key of first name and the value of that is crispy. The key is called last name and the value is cat. Key of job, uh, value of developer. Now, uh, it's a little bit more confusing because you can have a key called value the value of which is, in this case, you successfully made an API call. So, and, and another thing to be aware of is um, you can have key value pairs nested in other key value pairs. So in this case, we have a key called text field and the value of it is an object uh, with two key value pairs in it, type and value. Okay, so. What we've covered so far, what's a REST API, what are the parts of a REST API, and uh, the form of the response that we've received is called a JSON object, and it has a structured data in the form of a key value pair that can look uh, like that when it's pretty. Let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break at this point. And uh, the time is now uh, 6.53 Pacific time. We'll come back at 7.03. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to, happy to help answer them. Uh, if you uh, just wanna chat, I'll, uh, I will open up the floor uh, so we can get to know each other a little bit better. I know that uh, you know, we live in interesting times and sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's helpful to be social. So happy to, happy to chat with everybody on here. Please be back, uh, 7.04. I didn't get a cat. Uh, Patricia, that's okay. We didn't include the cats in the REST API call. That was just a cute example. So if you didn't get a cat in your API call, uh, it's expected. And if your parents didn't give you a cat when you wanted one, uh, you know, that's something, that, that's something I completely understand the upset and uh, they should have given you a cat. Unless you wanted a dog, in which case, if you, got, if you wanted a dog and you got a cat, uh, you'd be like my parents. Uh, and, I, and I think I turned out okay, all things considered. I had that cat for like 15 years. His name was Max, it's a beautiful Siamese snowshoe. I love that cat. He was, a, he was obnoxious though, super obnoxious. Still loved him. That's nice. Yeah. Anybody, uh, anybody have any pets they're missing on the call?
or maybe pets they're not missing? Great. Okay. Should I take it from the top? Yep. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> Folks, thanks for joining us again. Uh, <laughs> what we're going to do in this next portion of our segment today is to build your own get API call. In our last portion of, the, of our workshop, we gave you an API call to copy and paste and hit enter. We taught you about the components of an API call so that when you put in the, re the request and received a response, you would be able to uh, more or less interpret it and get a sense of where everything is. So that now when you build your own API call, you will have uh, some understanding of uh, what to put in and why. Let's jump in. Okay. If you have not signed up for your Kintone developer license, this is like, this is the stop on the train. This is the last stop on the train before uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start using that information. Uh, go ahead and sign up for your license now. And uh, if you haven't and aren't willing to, that's okay too. Um, but we will just be, you, you will not be able to make the calls and you can just follow along with us. Uh, Genji, could you please uh, put the, uh, Okay, thanks. Uh, perfect timing. As usual, uh, Genji dropped that link in the, um, in the chat. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going, you're, you will now have your own subdomain. So now it's basically like a platform that you can build apps from. Remember an app is like a, uh, a table in a database or a spreadsheet in a workbook. And, uh, and you're gonna create your own app. It'll have its own records. And you'll pull that information in to make the requests that you need, uh, along with making sure that you've got the proper permissions. Okay, so welcome to Kintone. And the page that you see in front of you is the first page that you'll see when you log into Kintone. It is our portal screen. And the, uh, the portal screen uh, it will have a place where you can create your own app. I've gone ahead, we've gone ahead and marked it over here. It's that plus sign in the apps pane on the mid right hand portion of the screen. Okay. Once you click that plus sign, you will uh, go to the left hand side of the page. There is a search bar at the top left hand portion. Search for employee onboarding and hit enter, and you'll see there's uh, a template that shows up. We're gonna be creating an app from a template. It's going to be the employee onboarding template. Once you see it in front of you, go ahead and click add this app. That's a very quick way to create apps here in Kintone. It's all you need. Once you click add this app, and you may need to click a few more OKs, um, you'll then be taken back to the portal page. And on the right hand side of the page, on the apps pane, the app segment of the page, there will be an employee onboarding app that you just created. Click on it. you'll notice that this app comes with sample data, okay? There are a few uh, navigational elements <clears throat> for you to familiarize yourself with on this page. There's the data front and center. Then on the top right-hand side, you can add new records by clicking on the plus sign. You can access the app settings by clicking on that gear wheel with the white background. This will be important. So please uh, be aware that that's where that gear wheel lives and we will want to get to it. And then, we're, and then we access the details page of the record. So for, in this particular, well, in Kintone, you can view the records in an app in a list like you'd expect a table to show. Um, or you can drill down into the details of a specific record, which we call the detail page. So you'll click on the, um, now Genji, do they click on the fun activities detail or are they clicking on the health insurance detail? 
the health insurance detail specifically. Great. So folks, on this page, even though uh, this little uh, red uh, rounded square uh, is, is highlighted over the top uh, detail, and we're actually going to go to the, the one that's third from the top, health insurance. Okay. And you'll click on that. Um, we'll click on that record and you'll be taken to a page where we have all of the details for that specific record. Okay. This is the record that we're going to want to access via uh, an API call. And so to do that, remember, we need all four parts of the API call, the endpoint, the method, the headers, and the body. So if you're using a Mac, you'll use curl. And if you're using Windows, you'll use the invoke web request uh, command, okay? Now notice over here, the highlighted portions of these commands that you'll see in red, subdomain. So subdomain is going to be dev, is, is going to be uh, at the top of your address bar you'll um no folks let me back up a second uh just so that it's, an, it's i explain this a little easier you should still be on the record details page you should have clicked into where it says health insurance you should be looking at a page that's got your health insurance this health insurance record now from there grab your url and your url has specific places specific items that you're going to want to pull out the red portion is your subdomain uh, if you've got, if you've signed up for a developer license, it'll be some short alphanumeric string like D seven eight K two or something like that. Um, you will need the app ID, which is the data that we're passing in because we're making a get request and we're telling Kintone, show me a record, and Kintone's going to want to know what record do you want to see in what app. So we need to tell it the app and the and the record. So that's what app ID is for, and that's what record ID is for. You'll find the app ID, it's the number that's immediately after the K slash. And you'll find the record ID, it's the one immediately after record equals in the URL. Grab all three pieces of this information, it's very important. You're gonna need them in order to successfully make this API call. Now someone earlier asked us about the token. We got you, here we go. Here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna a generalized use case for getting a Kintone API token. Here we go. You should see on the, uh, on the right-hand portion of your screen, there is a gear wheel on the white background. It'll bring you to the app settings. This is uh, what I was telling you to remember. Uh, we're gonna come back to it. Here we are, we're back to it. If you're in the detail view, it'll be on the right-hand side. If you're in the list view, it'll be on the right-hand side, pretty much the same place. From here, you'll notice now we're in the back end for the app, the app settings page. You'll see there are four tabs. We're going to click on the rightmost one called app settings. In the and you'll be and you'll be flipped to a page with three columns. You'll go to the center column, about uh, in, the, in the top part of the center column. You're gonna look under the heading customization and integration, and you'll be taken to API token, or sorry, you can, will click on API token. And once you're there, you'll see this page. Now here's how this page works. This page is telling you, okay, so you want us to give you an API token that'll give you basically like programmatic access. Sorry. Uh, It'll give you, it'll give you uh, uh, permissions uh, that you can set based on, nope, that's not how I want to say that. Um, your API token is like a key in a lock. You can have several different keys fit in a lock. Um, you get to issue the keys. To do that, you click generate. You'll click generate and you'll be presented with an API token. It's a long alphanumeric string, and you'll actually specify what kind of permissions you want to give this API token. So in other words, how many locks does this key open? And the ones that you're going to want to make sure you to add are the add records and edit records permissions. Okay. 
Once you've got that checked, view records, add records, edit records, you'll go ahead and click save. That blue save button on the top left portion of the screen. And then you'll be taken back to the app settings page. So what we just did is we saved a backend setting, but we haven't deployed it yet. We haven't deployed that change. To deploy the change, you will now look at the right-hand side of the screen where there is an update app blue button. Click on that. And then you'll, uh, you'll update the app. When that app is updated, you can then uh, use your API token. So in sum, at this point, you should have your subdomain, you should have the app ID, the record ID, and your API token. And you can put those, you can copy and paste those pieces of information into your get request, which you'll then make. Okay, so we'll go ahead and kick it off. If, you're fo if you've followed along so far and you've completed the task, please raise your hand and keep it up. If you're having trouble, no problem. Uh, please post your questions in the chat. Please post the uh, input or the output in the chat uh, if you're getting uh, some weird output. That, or some, let me rephrase that. I say some weird output and what I mean is the output that you are not expecting. Okay, great. Great work, Blythe, Jess, Lillian, Irina, Rachel. Very good. And we'll go ahead and we'll give you guys uh, five minutes for this. Lola, well done. Uh, so just checking if anybody's having a problem getting their developer license. Um, please could you PM uh, me, Will, with your email address and I'll have a check to see uh, where it, what's happened to your submission. Might have been just lost somewhere. Uh, we'll take, take a check. Thank you. In the meantime, uh, Cynthia is asking, where do we get the subdomain from the Kintone page? Cynthia, I'll show you exactly where that's from. When you are in Kintone, any Kintone page, it'll start with https colon slash slash something.kintone.com. That something is what you're looking for. That's the subdomain. You got it. Thanks for asking. And uh, what I'm going to do actually is I'll, I'm going to go ahead and, and just walk through these instructions again, but uh, silently. So I'll just kind of move along. And uh, if at any point in time you got stuck somewhere, not sure what your next steps are, you can you just see if we can, we can catch you wherever you are.
And for those of you uh, who have any questions or are stuck, please uh, post that in the chat. I lost my token. Okay, you can go ahead and create another one. Actually, if you go ahead to create another one, you'll probably see the token that you've already created. So you can copy that again. That's a better idea. Here are some common errors, by the way. Uh, you may have some broken space characters or curly quotes in there because your uh, word processor like may have auto-formatted them in there. That's why we recommend using a code editor. Um, you may have forgotten to update the app. Remember, once you've saved your API token, you need to stay, you, you need to move the changes, you need to deploy the changes from the staging environment. So you're gonna update the app. And then um, the, also if you're missing uh, quotes, uh, that's a common error. You're gonna wanna put them uh, around your uh, data and around your uh, endpoint. So uh, I also want to pull up this uh, this request format for you, so that uh, you can you can see the format for uh, for making this this call, whether you're on Windows or on Mac. Okay, please if you've uh, if you've completed the work, please raise your hand on Zoom. You're going to go into the participants tab. You'll uh, see there's a button over there that says uh, raise hand. How's everybody doing? You can go and type in, uh, I'm, I'm good. Just watching, feeling proud. Well done. Well done. Interesting because the, the last time we did this, we had quite a lot of people who didn't put straight quotes in and they were like a bit slanted, causing errors. I Many think, people uh, doing that. I think because we called it out in advance and suggested that people use code editors, you may have. Uh, <laughs> we may have gone over that. We may have crossed, crossed that bridge with ease this time. Great. Jess, well done. Johanna, uh, well done. I, I'm still not clear how to pronounce your name. If you, you feel free to, to type in pronunciation tips and I'll, I'll, I promise I'll get it right with some coaching. Um, how should the right answer look like? Very good. Um, it would look like... Um, you kind of like the like the what you saw the last time. It'll be this block of text in your terminal that'll be a JSON object. So you'll see a lot of curly brackets. Um, Elizabeth, where did we lose you? And uh, Alexandra, let me know if that does not answer your question. Okay. Uh, the second or third step, is it possible to see the result JSON in the browser? Um, yeah. Mm, we don't have the result JSON in the browser right now. Um, should I look for specific words? Yeah. So the words that you'll see, and I don't have an example of this immediately on hand to show you, but it will definitely have... Uh, the, some of the following information in there. Prior, uh, uh, you'll see high, you'll see health insurance in there, uh, you'll see general. You might not see the words priority or subject or department or details. Uh, 
but you you might you you should see the phrase health insurance capitalized. Is it possible to see the result JSON in the browser? Um, you could. Uh, I would recommend doing it in the terminal. You could do it in the console, but I think you might then need to deal with like cores requests. Well, when you run when you run code in in, a, in the console, is it automatically scoping it relative? It's automatically scoping it relative yeah, to whatever page you're the, on. To, so you yeah, to the just, page it is. Yeah, so you won't run into cores errors. Um, so if you're doing it in the console, then you should get a response back. Um, if you're more technical and you want to work with parameters in the URL, it might display in the browser, but I haven't actually checked that. But yeah. <laughs> oh, great. You can see there is the JSON in the in the dev tools, right? Um, like, do you mean like if you copied and pasted the response into the into the dev tools and had it had it pretty print for you, Patricia? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I've never done that. Give it a shot. Let me know how that works. Oh, 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 Patricia's answering. God, I love this. Patricia's answering Irina's question. Thanks team. We're like outsourcing our workshop. So everybody's helping everybody else. Go team. I love it. Genji also dropped a JSON formatter in the chat. Ah, tonight's a good night. I actually didn't know that. Um, so yeah, I just tried it out on my browser. So if you get an ugly JSON response, copy it and then paste it into your Google Chrome browser, then it comes up pretty fine and easier to debug. Cool. Thanks, Will. And you can also use you could also use Postman too. There's nothing wrong with using Postman uh, unless you wanted practice using the wizardry of the terminal, in which case Postman is, would replace that. Um, but if you don't really care where you're doing, you're making your, uh, your, your request from, you can also drop it there too. Okay, we're gonna check in at this point. Um, so we've, uh, so far we've configured a Kintone app We've identified the four components of a REST API call, and then we uh, stapled all of those pieces of information together in uh, our own REST API call, which uh, hopefully you've executed successfully. What we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take a five minute break. If you've had trouble, you got lost somewhere, uh, I invite you to stick around. We can use the five minutes to, to troubleshoot with you and make sure that you come back uh, up to speed when we return at uh, 7.35 Pacific. Uh, if, you're, if you're already good to go, you can, uh, you're, you're released for your five minute break. Go forth and enjoy. See you in five. Break, great timing, welcome back. Let's continue. We're gonna do something very similar to what we did before. Before we made our first get call together. So that was, the, the idea over there was uh, to tell the server, uh, hey, I want information from you. Here are the coordinates of the information, so to speak. In other words, I want this record from this app and this subdomain. Fetch, please, and then if we were successful, the computer will have given us that answer. Now we're going to build a post call and a, excuse me, a post API call is when we tell the server, the client tells the server, hey, I have some information for you to save somewhere. Please hold on to it. And so to do that, we're gonna create a new app in Kintone and uh, we'll be able to post a record on it in real time to see if our post was successful. Let's do it. First things first is create a TV survey app. Okay, we're gonna give you a crash course on how to create your own specialized custom apps in Kintone. The good news is this crash course 
is going to be so doable for you. If you're already doing um, making API calls in your terminal, this is this is low hanging fruit. Just like the last time, you will start in this portal. You will go to the right hand side. There is a plus sign where the apps pane is. Please click it. And actually what I want to try out is at any point in time, if we lose you, like if I'm going too fast, um, that's the point in time where you want to drop in to the, uh, to the chat and say, you're losing me. Uh, that way I can make sure I'm not doing, going too fast. Right. Uh, and then, and let's try that out. See if we can keep everybody together. All right, you went to the portal, you clicked on the plus sign. Here you are now in a page called Kintone Marketplace. And front and center, there is a button called Create App from Scratch. You're gonna click it. And when you do, you'll be taken to the app settings page for a new app. Here we are creating a new app. And to create a new app, we're gonna to need to create new fields. And so uh, actually the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the title. We're going to change it to um, TV survey app. And then we can also change the icon from this boring sky blue uh, formatted view or formatted uh, lines to uh, anything that you want, but you can also uh, pick any of those icons over there. If you happened to have a, uh, a TV icon, on your uh, machine, just waiting for this moment, go nuts. Um, you prescient person, you. If you don't though, uh, like the rest of us, you just pick, a rest of, pick, another, pick another one of those uh, icons and click okay. What we're gonna ask you to do now is to create two text fields. You're gonna take them from the uh, list of fields on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side of the page, the second column, Top of the column, there's a text field. You're gonna drag and drop two of them. And then you'll hover over it and click on, uh, click on that gear wheel on the field. You'll be taken to a page called text settings. This, uh, this GIF is going a little bit faster than I am. So we're gonna wait a moment, pull out the second uh, text field, hover over the gear wheel, click on settings, take it to the settings page. Let's change the name. So this is the field name, we're gonna change it to capital N name, and then the field code at the bottom, we're gonna change it to lowercase n name. And we're gonna do the same thing for the, uh, well, I guess we'll get to that in just a moment. It's important to note that you've got the name, thank you, Patricia. Uh, when you are seeing the text settings, it's important to note there are two places to, um, to change. There's the name that is presented to you on the GUI side, and then there's the name that's presented to the machine on the API side. So that's why they're separate, because you can present a different label for something to a human than you can to a machine. That's why we have you change both of those fields. Patricia, how am I doing? Check, great, I think that means checking something off. Okay, here we are. We're gonna, thank you. Um, we've got two different text fields. First one we just went over is name. The second one is show to recommend. So please change the top of uh, that settings, that field settings page. Sorry, that field settings window. The name of it's gonna be show to recommend and the bottom of it's going to be show. Then we hit okay. Once we've got those two fields, we're going to re, we're going to generate a new API token. This should sound familiar to you because many of you have just done this before. You'll go into the app settings tab uh, on the, uh, which is the fourth one. You'll click on the uh, API token button, which is in the second column, a little bit down underneath the customization and integration, um, uh, customization and integration uh, uh, title. And, um, and then we'll be taken to the familiar API token page. Click generate. 
click add records, click add edit records, and save this page. And then click update app to update the app and deploy these changes. Actually, sorry, it's gonna say activate app. No, update app. It might say activate app, yeah. You should, yeah, if this is a new app, it'll say activate app. So what we're actually doing is we're deploying the app for the first time. Activate app, totally expected behavior, um, no problem. Let's check in. If you have not finished creating your TV survey app, please drop a message in the chat, like, hold up one more minute or however long you think you need. If I don't hear from anyone in the next 15, 20 seconds, I'll keep going. Awesome, Elizabeth. Glad to see that you got it. Great. Rocking and rolling with us. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Genji, you think that's enough time? Okay, great. Let's post a record on this. We're gonna go back to these these uh, AP, these uh, these curl commands that we've made before, with, and we're gonna make a few slight changes. Okay, you'll notice the we still need a subdomain, we still need an app ID. We're gonna change the method, the HTTP method, from get to post. This tells our endpoint to expect data that's different than what it would have expected otherwise. And very much like what you'd expect, if you're going to be giving a server information to save and hold on to, you need to provide it with the information to do that. In our original get request, the data we provided were like the coordinates of the information we want. Now we're going to provide the information to hold on to. And so you'll see there is a lot of data to send. Over here, this is, so take a look at this, um, this break, this, uh, this API call breakdown. Excuse me. Your subdomain, you'll pull it from the same place. It will not have changed. The API token will have changed. It's a new API token. It's a new, very long alphanumeric string. You wanna copy and paste it from the API token you just created. And then, We've given you a JSON object mostly formatted. Um, you can copy and paste it from the code snippets that we've provided. Be sure to change the app ID. If you're feeling uh, particularly, uh, if you're feeling particularly courageous, or if you just have strong feelings about Game of Thrones, you can change the value of uh, Jon Snow to anything as long as those two quotes are still there. And the same thing with Game of Thrones exclamation point. Um, man, what a miss. What a miss. Like, it's amazing how we're all quarantined here for three months. And I don't think anybody, sorry, I said three months. I don't know how long it's been for you guys, but I'm already projecting into the future. And I don't hear anybody binge watching Game of Thrones. What a missed opportunity. Oh well, so we'll wait for the next show. I, uh, I personally go back to Battlestar Galactica. If you've, got any battle, if you've got any Battlestar Galactica fans on the call, I just want you to know like, you're my people. Yeah, vet solid. For the app ID, Cynthia's asking, where is that value? Cynthia, great question. In your uh, URL, um, you'll see it's your subdomain, dot kintone.com forward slash k forward slash then there's a number i believe it'll be two for you uh but it might not be 
uh, if you've been uh, fooling around on the break creating some apps. Um, you'll add that number where it says, it'll replace app ID with that number too. I actually started watching it and got to season four. Joanna, man, season four of Battlestar Galactica is the best. Uh, like the way that that last, those last three episodes finish, it's like incredible. Also the board game is really awesome too. Uh, if you like, uh, okay, Patricia is saying I have this error which I don't understand. Using this API token, you cannot run the specified API. Uh, Patricia, can you put in your input as well? Elizabeth nerds, just kidding. Yeah, apparently we run the world now. You know, nerds was, uh, you could have called me that in the 80s and 90s and uh, I would have been ashamed, but now I like, it's my people. And now it's cool, totally. Um, yeah, Joanna, that that uh, that Battlestar Galactica finale is very divisive. Um, yeah, I guess you'll fall on Kelly's side or you'll fall on mine. Very few people are neutral about it. Patricia, drop in your input. Um, you're okay. You need to put. You need to replace where it says insert underscore token. Patricia, you'll replace that with your with the API token that you pulled. It'll be the same thing with where it says app insert underscore app ID. It's cool. You got this. Yeah, yeah, She's no problem. Also using a version two API, which doesn't exist yet. Oh, very, very good. <laughs> so, folks, when I said two, and you heard me say, look at your look at your uh, you look at your URL and pull like it should say k slash two. It's a it's a different URL than the one you're using as an endpoint, which makes sense because if you're making a request to an endpoint, it's a different API. It's a different address than the one that you're living at right now. Might look similar. Uh, but it's different. So the URL that you should be living at right now, in other words, the, the, the page that your browser is displaying should be something like subdomain.kintone.com forward slash K forward slash will probably be two forward slash um, it's a bunch of queries. I don't remember what all of them, one of them will be, it'll be like, and record equals some number. Okay. That's different from the, from the URL of this, uh, of, of this, uh, um, of this REST API endpoint, which you'll notice is, is k slash v1 slash record.json. So they start off similarly, but they're not the same. Really, really good, um, really good. API dash queen dot kinto dot com for slash version. That's fine if you don't have anything uh, uh, after it. It's okay. What you need to do is grab the two and use it as the app ID. And Genji, Genji, can you read the endpoint out loud? I really want to hear you say API queen. <laughs> um, for a second, I thought I misspelled the queen, but um, API, uh, API queen. Um, and also, uh, um, please fill in the um, app ID and uh, token um, part uh, partition. Yeah, Patricia, you'll need your uh, your API endpoint and your uh, I'm sorry, you'll need your your API token and your app ID. All right, great, folks. Uh, please raise your hand as we're doing this uh, if you're if this is done for you. Um, you'll send the request. You'll get back uh, a. Uh, hold on, do we have anything interesting over here? Uh, oh yeah, sorry. If you're using PowerShell. This is what you'll do if you're using PowerShell. And for Windows users, I'm sorry that I waited so long to show this to you. I, uh, I've, I left your world a long time ago. Uh, if you've successfully sent the request, you should receive a response that has an object. It's got ID with a value, probably be like a value of one. Uh, or sorry, um, yeah, I did with a value of one, and the revision will be likely one as well. But it's okay if the numbers are different; it doesn't doesn't really matter to you to you right now. Go ahead and raise your hand uh, in Zoom if you've completed this task.
Uh, Cynthia, I noticed you're getting an error. Can you please post your input in the chat as well? Folks, anytime you post an, a, an error message, make sure you're posting both the input and the output so we can help troubleshoot it. Required field. It's possible, Cynthia, that when you created your app, you may have checked off. Uh, you may have checked off that a field is required. Um, actually, that wouldn't looks like a get request, not a post request. Oh, perfect. Yep, we'll crack the code on this one, Cynthia. Instead of uh, it, you need to change the word get in your method to post, so it'll look like. Uh, It'll look like this. You see in the blue area over here, it says uh, post. Oh, great, great work. Hey Will, do you want to um, do you want to share that out loud? Yeah, sorry, we're just running out of time, so I was just posting it in there. But um, I was pointing out that uh, someone was using uh, the version two API, and I that was because in the request URL of the uh, the API, there's a slash v two, and um, for Kintone, you should be using slash. V1 as shown in the uh, the slides there. And you'll see like V1, V2, V3, like regularly in the request URLs of um, other APIs as well, when you look through the documentations. Um, but there are some times when the dev team needs to like really restructure their API and um, you need to update the version and it breaks the code that you were using before. <laughs> they do give you like some like, uh, some time to change your code, like six months or so to change your code until they deprecate it. Um, but yeah, that's that's how things work in the uh, the API industries. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so you posted the record. You should be able to see if your post is successful when um, you go into Kintone. And uh, you should be able to see in the app that you created this this new request, or sorry, this new um, this new piece of data that you asked Kintone to save. Uh, so it'll show up in your in your list view with that new uh, with that new information. Okay. So we learned about REST APIs today. Uh, I encourage you to take the following next steps on your journey uh, to learn more about APIs. First of all, uh, call a REST API from a language you're most familiar with. You can, uh, you can search more about how to make requests in that language. Um, languages like JavaScript, for example, uh, may have some uh, specific uh, syntax uh, for uh, 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 making that call. And then um, feel free to uh, do a deep dive in uh, Kintone's REST API and learn how to use uh, our, our REST API uh, to help you learn more about how to use the tools in general. Um, we've got lots of JavaScript tutorials in the uh, Kintone developer program. Definitely, you're, you're welcome to it now. You're part of the tribe. Welcome. And uh, for those of you who uh, were successful in uh, making your post request, Great work. Well done. Um, if you're still having some trouble 
no problem. We're happy to uh, stick on for a little bit longer and, and troubleshoot with you. Um, what we want to do next, oops, what we want to do next is uh, open the floor to uh, any questions. And then we've got one other thing uh, for you before we, uh, before we hand it off for the evening. So uh, take a, a wait for like a 10, 15 seconds in the chat, or if you want to unmute yourself and just, you know, hey, I have a question and then ask your question. And, uh, and then we've got a special, um, well, hell, we'll just jump in. Nobody's asking questions. Um, here's an opportunity for you to win a, a $25 Amazon gift card. I'll turn it over to uh, my team. Uh, thank you, Nim. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for the, uh, the compliments. Uh, we want to uh, get your feedback on what we did well, what we didn't do well, and also um, any suggestions on your part. So please help us improve our events by filling out this quick um, event survey at bit.ly slash KDP underscore feedback and, enter, um, and get a chance to win $25 Amazon gift card. Um, if you have any suggestions for future topics, please include that in the survey as well. Thank you. I have a quick question. This is Patricia. Just, um, I know you briefly said this, Nim, right before we were getting ready to sign off about what next steps are, but can you, any of you more experienced folks, can you tell us um, what we could do as a beginner project to start using what we learned today? What would be a good beginner project? Oh, it's a super cool question. Um, here's an example of a beginner project. Um, you could uh, make, uh, you could pick some API calls in Kintone and then make them from your, uh, from your uh, 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 terminal. You could also, um, we've got a bunch of, uh, we've got a bunch of like really accessible uh, tutorials if you're interested in learning JavaScript or some more, uh, or like how to make some more API requests, so you can you can build those projects um, in Kintone because Kintone lets you uh, basically code with JavaScript to make the platform to to make the platform what you want. Okay, and then um, so I'm a backend engineer, Ruby on Rails backend engineer um, with a little bit of JavaScript experience, would that be something that I could probably pick up with the tutorials or do I need to maybe do some refreshing of JavaScript? Well, what do you think? What's your take? I don't know. There are two ways to approach it because um, there are some front end APIs and back end APIs and uh, those who already know some JavaScript can uh, try out the front end APIs, obviously, uh, which are on the website. Um, and in your case, you're um, much more accustomed to the back end APIs and using REST APIs. Uh, so really start off with that. I mean, there are many um, like public APIs out there, um, government based APIs or NASA has some really nice space type APIs that you can um, get information from uh, your backend system. Uh, you can retrieve those and then use Kintone as uh, like a storage for storing your data there. Um, and that's, I think, I think that's how I would start using it. I'm using it like a, like a backend storage and see how that goes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually do the front end that you guys have because that's something that I don't do in my daily job and so I pr I'd rather learn maybe. Yeah, oh, I think excellent. I'm going to do yeah. that. That's Thanks. awesome. All right. Well, um, so where you can... There is... Oh, sorry. No, go Just ahead. wanted to point out there, there is um, a community page on the developer site. So if you ever get stuck on any of the coding, um, just copy and paste what you've done so far and share us your errors and then uh, we'll be able to help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so folks, I, uh, uh, Genji, Will, anything else over here? Uh, yes, there was a technical problem with this QR code because it doesn't access uh, a valid URL. So please access the URL that's below the QR code, which I hope 
um, goes to it, yes, it does. It goes to a survey page uh, to put in your survey results. Survey the technical problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Will, for thanks for pointing that out. Thanks, folks, for rolling with us on that. Uh, no, oh, uh, uh, there was a little uh, dropping a little hint there. We've got some bonus workshop material, but we ran out of time. Uh, so, so ask us for it or do it on your own. Uh, you can go ahead and get download the deck, and you'll notice there's some bonus material we left for you to do uh, as an exercise. Uh, for those of you who uh, stayed with us the whole time or joined us in the middle, uh, wherever you are, however you got here, thanks for being with us. We hope you learned something and that it was a fantastic use of your time. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody uh, have a wonderful evening, be safe, be well, and we look forward to seeing you on your, uh, on your journey. Hi guys, thanks. All right, thank you. Take care. Awesome, thank you everyone. Thank you. Materials will be sent out, right, Nim? Or you plan on sending it out if like they didn't get it? time uh yes you should receive materials and i don't have information on when and how that's done i'm just clear that it gets done okay all right yeah we'll be sure to circulate that uh yes uh Sorry. the recording will be shared on the same website as the powerpoint and pdf download um so bit.ly slash kdp underscore meetup thank you Genji. But I'll, I'll send it to Women Who Code directly as well. Great, great, and uh, and thank you, team. Uh, Jennifer, Kelly, Will, Genji, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, make this an excellent uh, an excellent uh, work. Thanks for the great workshop. Yeah. See you, everybody. Thanks for joining us.